A cordial greeting. Today is Monday, June 17, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. At the time of recording this video, it is 5.30 in the morning local time in the state of Texas, where close monitoring of the potential development of a tropical depression early this week is required. This system may move near the southern part of the state or over Tamaulipas, bringing significant rainfall events to the southern half of Texas, along with tropical storm force wind gusts in the coastal area. It is also important for residents of Tamaulipas and northern Mexico to pay attention to the evolution of this disturbance, as there is still some uncertainty regarding whether it will move more towards the west over Tamaulipas Tamaulipas, or take a more northerly path over southern Texas. In this video, we will analyze the development probabilities, model projections, and accumulated rainfall estimates expected over the next few days across Texas, northeastern, and northern Mexico. Briefly, I wanted to mention that we are also closely monitoring a low-pressure system developing to the north of the Caribbean, which has a low probability of cyclonic formation as it moves west-northwest. It is important for residents of Georgia and Florida to stay alert to the evolution of this system. For more details on this forecast, I invite you to stay tuned to my YouTube channel, as I will be recording another video this morning to discuss this particular forecast. Returning to the Gulf of Mexico region, the potential development of a tropical depression or possibly tropical storm Alberto is related to the Central American Gyre, which continues its slow northwestward movement today, bringing heavy rains across Central America and southern Mexico. This extreme rainfall event will persist over the region for at least the next seven days. If you want to know the details of the rainfall estimates expected in southern Mexico and Central America and the high risk of flooding in the region, I invite you to watch a video I recorded last night where I provide details of the anticipated rainfall accumulations over the next five to seven days. The possible cyclonic development in the Gulf of Mexico is quite complex, primarily due to the presence of two low-pressure areas. One is currently located on the coast of Guatemala and will be moving north towards the Bay of Campeche, while another area of maximum vorticity is located north of the Yucatan Peninsula and will be moving northwest. This will result in a rather broad circulation extending across the western Gulf of Mexico, and we still do not know exactly which of the two low pressures will dominate or where a tropical cyclone could consolidate. I will warn you that this forecast has high uncertainty, as is usual with cyclonic formation associated with such a broad circulation of the Central American gyre. At 2 a.m., the National Hurricane Center increased the chances of cyclone development to 60% over the next 48 hours and 70% over the next seven days. They have identified that the low pressure is already located over the Bay of Campeche, while the one over land in Guatemala will move north and interact with the low pressure already in the Bay of Campeche. Preliminarily, we have some trajectory projections for Invest 90, or the low pressure located over Guatemala. This gives us an idea of where this disturbance might head if the circulation consolidates towards the southern Gulf of Mexico. The projections indicate it could move over northern Veracruz or southern Tamaulipas. However, this projection assumes Invest 90 moves towards the Bay of Campeche and consolidates to the south. However, if the low pressure located west of the Yucatan Peninsula consolidates more towards the north, the trajectory will likely be more northward over southern Texas or northern Tamaulipas. Also, in terms of intensity, most models predict a tropical depression or weak tropical storm before moving over Mexico or Texas. So, at least the good news for now is that we are talking about a tropical depression or perhaps a weak tropical storm, and we cannot rule out the possibility that a tropical cyclone may never form. Now, let's look at the latest projections from the global models. But first, remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss any videos related to this forecast. Go to the bottom of the video, click on the red button that says subscribe, and then click on the bell to get notifications when I record new videos. Let's start by looking at the GFS model projection. Here today, we can see the broad circulation associated with the Central American gyre. Notice that by the early hours of Tuesday morning, the GFS model develops a low-pressure system to the north of this circulation, while it shows another low-pressure system located west of the Yucatan Peninsula. During the afternoon hours on Tuesday, the northern area strengthens, potentially developing into a tropical depression and moving over southern Texas. According to this projection, this low pressure could reach southern Texas during the night hours of Tuesday. However, the GFS also shows a weaker low pressure moving over the Bay of Campeche. Overall, we are left with a rather broad circulation which is characteristic of systems that form from a Central American gyre. At least, this prevents them from strengthening much before reaching Texas or northern Mexico. In another scenario, as shown by the European model, both low-pressure areas reach the Gulf of Mexico. During Tuesday afternoon and evening, we have one moving over northern Tamaulipas while another low-pressure zone is near the Yucatan Peninsula. Ultimately, the European model converges several areas, and we are left with a dominant low pressure that would move over central Tamaulipas during the morning hours of Thursday. So here we can clearly see a difference between the two models. 
the GFS model has the system further north and moving faster, reaching southern Texas during the night hours of Tuesday, while the European model has a tropical depression or tropical storm further south with a slower movement, arriving in central Tamaulipas during the morning hours of Thursday. We also have the projection from the German model, which shows a tropical storm entering near northern Tamaulipas or southern Texas during the night hours of Wednesday. Meanwhile, the UK model shows a tropical storm moving over northern Tamaulipas during the morning hours of Thursday. Once again reviewing, we have two scenarios. The first is that the center consolidates to the south in the Bay of Campeche and moves over Tamaulipas during the night hours of Wednesday or the early morning hours of Thursday. The other scenario is that this area of maximum vorticity, located north of the Yucatan Peninsula, consolidates into a system further north in the Gulf of Mexico, reaching southern Texas during the afternoon or evening hours of Tuesday. These different scenarios are clearly seen in the ensemble members of the GFS model, with some having a trajectory over southern Texas and northern Tamaulipas, while others have a trajectory over central and southern Tamaulipas. Meanwhile, the ensemble members of the European model mostly favor a more westerly trajectory over the state of Tamaulipas. In my opinion, I believe the northern area of this circulation will be the one that consolidates and eventually moves between southern Texas and northern Tamaulipas. However, this forecast has low confidence, and we will need to continue monitoring the potential development of this tropical cyclone. Regardless of whether it moves further south over Tamaulipas, the reality is that the heaviest rain is expected to move over the state of Texas, as shown in this image, because the northern and northeastern quadrants are where the most significant moisture flow would be located, moving from the Gulf of Mexico waters over the coast, east, and south of Texas. In fact, we can see that particularly between Tuesday night and Wednesday morning, heavy downpours and potentially flooding could occur in central and southern Texas. For example, here we have the GFS model projection which by consolidating the center of circulation further north and moving it over southern Texas, shows significant rainfall accumulations across central and southern Texas, with up to 17 inches of rain expected over the next seven days. This could lead to a major flooding event for cities like Houston, Austin, San Antonio and Corpus Christi. Another scenario is that it moves a bit further south, but still, the European model is projecting between 4 to 8 inches of rain over the coast and east of Texas. There is still some uncertainty about how much rain will fall over Mexico. For example, the GFS model currently projects between 75 to 100 millimeters of rain affecting Veracruz, Tamaulipas, and Nuevo León. Meanwhile, the European model shows more significant rainfall accumulations, especially for Veracruz, Tamaulipas, and Nuevo León, where over 175 mm of rain could fall, with maximum accumulations reaching over 300 mm in the next five days in the city of Monterey. Even so, this rain will be welcome to alleviate the drought and heat that have affected this area over the past few months. Lastly, let's analyze the wind-related effects. The GFS model with a trajectory over southern Texas, would result in some tropical storm force winds between 45 to 55 miles per hour, affecting the Texas coast and southern Texas between Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday of this week. The European model, with a trajectory further south over Tamaulipas, still shows the most active winds over the coast and east of Texas. So, in terms of winds, it seems that Texas would bear the brunt with some winds between 50 to 55 miles per hour. But this is subject to change, especially regarding whether they strengthen more than anticipated. I personally don't believe that this disturbance will strengthen beyond a tropical storm, with maximum winds of 55 miles per hour. Well, that's all for the update on the potential development of a tropical cyclone in the Gulf of Mexico. Our followers in Mexico and Texas, stay tuned for further updates through my YouTube channel. I also wanted to invite you to consider becoming a member of my channel by clicking on the blue button below the video that says join. With a small monthly contribution, you can help support my project and receive some additional benefits. Well, with that, I bid you farewell, and hope you all have an excellent start to the week.